Greetings, my little yarnivores. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. All right, so today I'm going to show you how to knit this absolutely stunning scarf, and it's all done as one piece. It looks like we've got a triangle here of garter, and then we have a big old triangle here of garter, but actually it's done continuously, so you're not piecing things together. And this really gorgeous striping is done with Red Heart Boutique Treasure. No, I'm not sponsored, but I love the yarn. And this colorway was abstract. And they've got a whole bunch of different colorways. And, you know, like I said, I'm not sponsored, but I do love this yarn. It's so soft and luxurious. And I love the color changes and the self-striping. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so wanted to give you an example of what it looks like if you use a self-striping. Now, I also thought it might be fun to try with Karen Cakes. Again, not sponsored, but, you know, Karen Cakes is one of my faves. And so as you can see, because it's not self-striping and there are blocks of color change, it makes a much more distinctive changeover. Now, okay, that's kind of boring, but Ooh, look at that, you know, so it really depends on what kind of, ooh, there we go again, what kind of look you're going for. Now, this is a work in progress, but uh, at least I was able to finish up the other one for you. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you with some Red Heart Super Saver, no color change, but we're going for simplicity here. This is a tutorial and I'm using size 10 knitting needles. These are double pointed. Um, I would suggest using nice long ones or circular for that matter. Um, you know, size 10 uh, is a little bit bigger than Worsted Weight recommends, but I like the drape uh, that the fabric is created with. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Okie dokie pokey. So now we are going to start. You do not need a long tail because we are only starting with one stitch and that is the cast on stitch. So you cast on first stitch. There you go. <laughs> All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to build up a triangle first. Now this is very much similar to a previous tutorial that I did on how to create a knitted garter diagonal scarf. So you might wanna look at that as reference. So we're gonna start by making this one stitch into two stitches. So we're gonna be doing what's called a knit front back. So we knit through, and then without taking that first loop off, we knit into the back of that same, that same loop there. Okay, so when we wrap the yarn around and pull through, we now have two stitches. Okay, it can be a little bit fiddly because when you're working with just one stitch, it's like, oh my, what do we do, right? But it does take a little bit of practice and getting used to. So we went from one stitch to two stitches. Then on this first stitch here, again, we are going to do a knit front back. So knitting the front and then going in through the back of the stitch. And so we end up with two stitches and then we knit the last one. So we went from one to two to three, and it's going to keep growing one stitch every row. And so the beginning stitch is always a KFB, AKA <laughs> knit front back. And then you just knit the rest of the stitches. And we're going to proceed to do this for as long as we want our base triangle to be. And I will show you what I mean. Let me just finish up this row here. All right, so now we've got four stitches. Isn't that something? 
And this is really great because it's just the garter, which of course is one of the uh, building blocks of knitting. You know, it's just really, really, really super simple. Now, let me get my example over here. All right, so see what we're doing is this is our base triangle. And so, you know, starting from the very, very corner, working our way up, working our way up. Now, I'm not going to do this many stitches for the tutorial, but uh, you want to have as many uh, stitches, um, like for instance, from here to here is how many stitches you would have on your needles. Now, the bottom edge here is going to be the width of your scarf. So basically you want to add as many stitches along here as the rows down here create a nice width for your scarf. Okay? Matter of personal preference, you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue adding on my stitches here one at a time, doing a KFB at the beginning of every row uh, for a bit for a decent sized swatch and then we will go on from there. All right. So keep stitching and I'll be back in a bit. Okie dokie. So as you can see, I made up a more substantial swatch. And so this is only 15 stitches, okay? Obviously, if you're doing a scarf, you would want to do more than that. You know, we're not all Barbie. And so this would be the width of the piece, okay? Now, here is where the fun starts. So we're going to be creating a triangle in, sorry, like like this, you know, in this space here, we're actually going to be creating a triangle. Now, it's going to seem awfully wonky at first, but trust me, it will make sense. I never steer you wrong. All right, so the first stitch is going to be just like every other, where we do a KFB to begin with. Nothing new there. Through the back, like so. All right, so we have our KFB, our knit front back. Okay, so we've got our two stitches there. Then we are going to slip the next two stitches, okay, as if to knit. So as if you're going in, you know, as you would normally to knit, but you slip that off and then you slip the next one off as if to knit. So as you can see, our yarn is over here, and then we've got these two stitches there. What you want to do is you're going to want to knit these two slipped stitches together. So you go in underneath. It's a little tricky to show you on camera, but all right, see, slipped underneath both of those there. All right, then going to knit them together like so and then slip them off Ta -da! so that was our KFB right there and that was knitting those two stitches together now this is where it seems a little odd but trust me so now we turn our work okay and then we put our yarn to the back because we're going to continue knitting so going to the back and then we're going to take these three stitches over here and we're going to knit them as we normally do. Now, because we have a bit of a gap here, we need to pull it a little bit tight. Just a bit. You know, we don't want any gaping holes in our work. And we're just knitting these three stitches here. Nothing schmancy. All right, and then we turn our work again. This is going to be a lot of turning. Let me tell you, this project, lots and lots and lots of turning. All right, so now, as you can see, <clears throat> we have a bit of a gap there, okay? Now, we're gonna be creating, again, another KFB on that first stitch, and these two stitches are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be knitting together. So it's going to be the same number of stitches on our needle, 15, Okay, uh, so we're, cre we're creating a stitch and then we're decreasing a stitch. That way we maintain 
the same number of stitches for every row. I will elaborate by showing. All right, so we're doing our KFB in the beginning. All righty. Okay, and then we're going to knit that one stitch. Okay, now we have our two stitches with a gap in the middle. Okay, and so we're going to slip as if to knit. And then the next one on the other side of the gap, slip as if to knit. And then we are going to knit them together. This one's a little easier. And knit these two together. Ta -da! Then we turn our work again. Put the yarn to the back. Insert the needle. Tauten it just a bit. And knit these now four stitches across. And so the gap keeps moving along with every row until the gap reaches the very end of the piece. See, now the gap is over here. Eventually, it'll be all the way down here. So right now, because this is monochromatic, I understand it seems a little bit odd, but trust me. All right, so see right now, this piece here, you know, these uh, garter stitches, instead of it going this way, they're going this way. It'll make more sense as I keep going. Trust me. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to do this row one more time. All right, so we knit front back. With the first stitch. Slide that off there. Then, because we have our gap right there, so I'm going to knit two stitches. One, two. All right, and then we do our slip, slip, knit. Slip slip and knit, pull those off, turn the work, yarn to the back, pull it a little taut, and knit the rest of the stitches. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you for a moment and I will be back when I approach the end of this row and I will show you how to begin the next triangle. Alrighty, so I shall be back in a flash and see, as you can see, we have our gap right in here and I'm gonna continue on until I reach the last couple stitches. So you keep stitching and work your way across and I'll be back in a bit. Hello again. All right, so as you can see, this was down here, our initial triangle. And then by building up the sides here, by increasing and then knitting together here, we have created a new triangle. And I'm almost done with this triangle. See, I just have one more gap here. And so, you know, as always, it's going to be a knit front back here. And then I'm going to knit my way across. And I will show you what to do so that we can continue and make our next triangle going in the opposite direction. All right, just touching base. I'll be with you in just a second. All right, so I'm almost to my gap right there. So I'm just going to knit this stitch here. <clears throat> and okay, so we're going to close this gap with a slip slip knit. So that's slip, slip, 
and then we're going to knit these two last ones together and that will finish our triangle. Ta -da! All right, so now this new triangle is going, <clears throat> excuse me, this new triangle is going to be almost identical to how we started from the original triangle to here. So we have flipped our work and we are going to begin yet again with a, you guessed it, knit front back. There's a lot of these in this one. So we do our knit front and knit back. Pull that through and off. And then we do a slip slip knit. And this is what we're gonna be doing at the beginning of every triangle. And really, it's as many triangles as you want. All right, the first one's always a little bit fussy, but we shall persevere. Okay, so we did the slip slip, and now we're going to knit these two together. Slip those two stitches off. Shaboom. Flip the work, just like before. Yarn to the back and knit these stitches. Make sure that first one's just a little bit taut and knit back to the beginning. So it's all about repetition. And once you get the hang of the process, you know, I mean, this gap here acts as a bit of a place marker. So you don't need a stitch marker because this is like having your own stitch marker right there, like a little belly button, buttonhole kind of thing. So what we're, you know, basically what you're just gonna keep doing is doing this exact same process until you have built up another triangle. And then after I have finished with this triangle, off camera, of course, <laughs> don't wish to bore you to tears. Um, I'm going to show you how to finish up. See, I'm at the buttonhole, so to speak. So you do the slip and slip, and then we knit them together. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to finish off the piece so that it has a finished corner. Turn the work, make it a little bit taut, and you just knit back to the beginning. All right, so I shall leave you momentarily, and I will finish up this triangle piece, and we shall continue. All righty, so keep stitching, and I'll be right back. Ta-da! <laughs> Hello again. All right, so as you can see, we have our beginning triangle and then we formed another one and another one. Now you could quite conceivably do this pattern with, you know, uh, a monochromatic scheme. Personally, I think it's more fun using the uh, self-striping yarn or even a variegated yarn. If you do use a variegated yarn, I would strongly suggest using one where the, the colorway um, is at least you know you know several inches long um, so that you actually have little bits of stripe going along uh, as opposed to variegated yarns where the color change is like inch by inch by inch it's gonna be a speckle you know and I think that that would look a bit of a mess so you could of course as I said use you know a solid color and because it creates a really interesting texture as you keep progressing along now what we need to do now is, of course, finish this corner here. And to do that, it's really quite, quite simple. Basically, it is a matter of doing the exact opposite of what we did at the very beginning. At the very beginning, we were increasing a stitch for every row. Now, what we're going to be doing, uh, you know, conversely is we are going to be decreasing a stitch for every row. So 
since right over here, you know, we did the slip slip knit at the very end here, we're going to work our way all the way across and then do our decrease because we just did a decrease. So just knit our way across. And uh, I really do like this pattern for its simplicity, the texture, um, and naturally, you know, it looks a lot more complicated than it is, and that's always fun. You know, rather enjoy patterns where it looks exceptionally difficult, but you yourself know, eh, it really wasn't that bad. You know, it's just a matter of how you take very, very basic stitches and manipulate them. You know, I mean, it's a knit front back and then knit two together, you know, a slip slip knit here and there. And there you go. It's sort of like taking a few basic ingredients and boom, you've got a cake, right? All right, so we have knitted our way just about all the way across. Okay, so we've got two stitches left. So we are gonna knit these two together. So just going in through, sometimes it's easier to go in through the front first to loosen them up a little. My stitching tends to be a little on the tight side. So going through the back like so, and knit these two together. Shaboom. And then turn your work, and you do the exact same thing over and over until you end up with just one stitch left on your needle. It's really quite as simple as all that, to be perfectly honest. And, um, What you can do, and what I would suggest, is that if you are a beginner to knitting, this is a bit of an intermediate project, so to be fair, um, what I would suggest is that because you are knitting on the bias, you are knitting some short rows, so to speak, I would strongly suggest that you use a lifeline um, at some point during your piece because when you have a bit of knitting here and a bit of knitting here, if you make a mistake, it could be rather difficult to fix. I'm more than willing to admit uh, the piece that I showed before, I had to do a lot of ripping out of old stitches and frogging because I had made a mistake myself. And uh, I did not have a lifeline and I regretted that, let me tell you. So I would suggest using a lifeline just in case. You know, it'll make it a lot easier. And you can find a video on how to use a lifeline in this playlist. Okay, so I got my last two stitches and we're gonna go in through the back of those stitches again, through both, and knit these two together. So basically we're just, as I've said, doing the exact opposite of what we started with and you will keep doing that. It will look a little bit weird because this side is gonna keep going up and this side is gonna go this way, you know, because it's gonna create an angle there. So I'm gonna keep going for a bit and I will meet up with you when I'm just about finished. So keep stitching. Alrighty, so as you can see, I am nearly done. Just have three stitches left, no big deal there, because we can finish this in no time. All right, so it's just a matter of stitching one and then stitching these last two together here. If I can get in through there, yes, okay. Yes, I know my stitches tend to be a little on the tight side, and I missed that one. Pardon me. I am trying here. There we go. All right, and we'll knit these two together. <clears throat> Aha, success. Okay, now I've just got two, and because I only have two, I'm just going to knit these two together. All righty. So 
to. Now to do this, because the yarn is in the front there, it's actually a little bit easier. I'm going to prime the space there, and I'm going to go in through the opposite side. Okay, like that, and then knit them together, these last two. And voila! All right, <clears throat> so as you can see, we have a finished piece. Now, I understand that the beginning tri triangle goes one way, and then we have another one, and it doesn't go the opposite way. I understand that, but I really, really like the way this looks. And it's almost as if when you're starting off, it starts off perfectly geometric, and then it just sort of, let me show you on the side, then it just sort of fades off into doing its own thing. You know, sort of like a, a raindrop, a crystalline raindrop doing its thing. I like it. So listen, if you enjoyed this video as much as I did, and you know I always do, uh, please hit like if you haven't already. Please hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. I try to come up with more of them as often as I can in spite of my busy schedule. And if you have any comments, questions, don't hesitate. Ew, I'm all tongue-tied. Don't hesitate because I love hearing from you guys. It means the world to me. When you leave your feedback and your comments, I get, you know, I absolutely love it, you know live for it. And um, until next time, stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and stay stitching. All right. Until next time, you have a great, great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.